A few clarifications first. When I say a child, I mean everyone below the age of 18. This is in accordance with the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, which defines a child as everyone under 18 unless, under the law applicable to the child, majority is attained earlier. When we refer to someone with parental responsibility for a child, we mean someone who, according to the law in the child's country of residence, has the legal rights and responsibilities for a child that are normally afforded to parents. This will not always be a child's natural parent, and parental responsibility can be held by more than one natural or legal person. Also, all of the research that is shown in here is from the last 12 months, and I'm showing all of these examples just to support my point, not to personally attack any of these families individually or individuals. I have an opinion about their choice of putting their kids online, but I'll share that at a later date. In today's times, it seems like we are all online. Millennials have grown up with the internet still becoming popular, but the new generations don't have that luxury anymore. Now, from infancy, a baby's photo can be shared online and seen by millions of people. The awkward phase that each and every one of us went through is now posted on Instagram or TikTok. Pretty much everyone is online, but are we really safe? Are we aware of how much sensitive data we just give away for free? Remember the time when you went on vacation? Of course you posted all those beautiful pictures in your new tan. Have you ever thought that just an innocent post on Instagram might make your house or flat vulnerable to being broken into? In a nutshell. It is, it's yeah, exactly I feel like it's that, like yeah. what you're putting out there is filtered from what's actually happening. It's exactly happening that, it. which yeah. is why I don't have social media. I don't either. Well, I, Kelly Clarkson does. I think yeah. I know I would have, I mean, thank God I was like sleeping under a rock when all of this happened, but I yeah. would have been canceled. I have no I have no doubt that me being who I am would have gotten me in trouble. Yeah, right? Nobody's so glad it wasn't around when we were like in high school. Yeah, high, all, what? Uh, yes. I'm, yeah. I'm, I, there's nothing in, like the things that I thought were smart that I would have been like, send, that I was like, <laughs> I'm so smart at 17. I'm so happy that those things have not been like right? posted. Like, I don't know if you do this with your kids, but I'm like, look, no decision in life is permanent except for the ones on the internet. And I was like, look, everything that you do, you can always say sorry, you can always fix mistakes, you can always make yourself better. I'm constantly making mistakes. But if it's in the internet, that's yeah. it. There's yeah. not much you can do about it. This phenomenon is called digital kidnapping. And yes, it is as scary as it sounds. As parents, we love to take photos of our kids and post them. It's a great way to keep our family and friends in the loop. But now experts are issuing this new alert that bad guys are using our posts against us to track our children. This morning, you're about to see how they do it. Plus, the simple setting on your phone that you can change right now to protect your family. Your baby's hatching. <laughs> From Facebook to Instagram, parents sharing their children's lives online. But now the new world crime, digital kidnapping, predators stealing your kids' photos and spreading them online. This stranger posting on Facebook claiming this girl was his daughter. In another recent case, a child's photo was tagged on a porn site. Turns out most of us are putting our own families at risk and we have no idea. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to Rux Cybersecurity. Uh, today we are going to talk about children's safety online and build a profile on how much a predator can gather on anyone online. Today we're going to talk about children in particular because they are the most vulnerable online considering just their age. And they're still learning, discovering the world. So, of course, all this um, information applies to all vulnerable groups. I do not want to marginalize anyone in here because we're not about that. But today, we're just going to talk about children in particular. Let's get into it. <laughs> ways in which children show up online nowadays. From being filmed every day by your parents and being forced to be on social media and your parents make money because of you, to not having any presence at all on social media platforms. With more exposure comes more and more risk 
And today we're gonna explore a couple of ways kids show up online and the risk that this all entails. Starting with family vloggers and children actors, let's see what 100 from a scale to z from zero to 100, let's see what 100 looks like. If you wanna know more about the analytics regarding family vlogging and more of the, the privacy issues regarding the child development, um, and the pressures that each child has, please go into my description. I've put some links in there with some information from amazing creators on YouTube that talk about these type of things. Now, let's get into the meat of the things. What type of information can a predator or hacker, to be honest, find online about a child? Let's start with a child's face, multiple angles, on a video and not video format, but there's a lot of videos out there with children, aren't they? Their name, their date of birth, their sibling's name, their sibling's date of birth, the time when the kids are being picked up and dropped off at school. In some cases, what school they go into. I have seen, uh, and I'm not gonna, show them but there are situations online with some family vloggers that have put the information of their children's school online and because of that there are plenty of consequences around them the whereabouts of the children and what routine they usually have what they eat almost every single day or what groceries they have in the house that can be a information used their medical problems and their medical history from mental health to actually physical health. There's multiple vlogs out there on YouTube with children going to the doctor for a knee injury because they got hurt in some shape or form or for their mental health. Parents somehow keep putting this information online. Doctor's appointment, if we're still in the same realm. When they moved, where they moved, or when they're gonna move and where are they going to move. What they like to do, like hobbies, what activities they do at school, like extracurricular activities, all of that. It's information that somebody can use for bad stuff. And as I said about their family, family history, parents' names, parents' date of birth, their siblings' names, siblings' date of birth, their own date of birth and so on. And all that information is very personal information that somebody can use in multiple ways, which we'll get into in a moment. Back in Ohio, cyber safety expert Jesse Weinberger is poring over their social media pages, checking for private information. So what do you find here? Through mom's Facebook account and everything that she's posted, I was able to find out husband's name, children's names. She has two children. I know their ages. I know their dates of birth. I know where they go to school. I have the address of the school. I have the name of the teacher. I know exactly which playgrounds they visit, how often they like to go to each playground. You were showing me a map where you're actually able to find out the path they take to school, how they walk and when. Right. It wasn't hard. But even scarier, she says our photos can have a hidden location signature embedded in them. Even if you don't tag the location, anyone can still find out where you are. Now, this is like the, the multitude of things. And I'm pretty sure there's more, even more information out there that somebody can fish. But these are very, this is a very important list. And the list gets shorter and shorter, the less kids get posted online. So for example, if you're a normal user um, of Instagram and you don't necessarily put any information out there um, about your kids, but every once in a while you put on Facebook, hey, my kid is in the hospital, that risk gets reduced. So you're not at 100% all of the information barely keep anything private sort of scale, you kind of go down. And the more you go down in the scale of putting information online, your risk of things happening also goes down with that. Some of these accounts that are very close to 100 are, being, are putting their kids in a very, very dangerous and scary situations. 
If someone wanted to harm these children in any shape or form, they have plenty of background information, health information and so on for them to be able to just do that, so do whatever they want to. Now, what are the actual risks? What can it happen? You're asking like, great, all of these things are like, it's not great, but what are the actual consequences around it? Online bu bullying, cyber stalking, online harassment, stalking, like physical stalking, being watched by predators online and offline. Now what you do is you hit filter and you go to playlists. And you're like, hey, people make playlists all the time. I make playlists. Yeah, cool. Playlists are cool. Unless you're a predator making a playlist. Rock, Rockasaurus Rex, one of my favorite tiny tanks, okay, came up and found this. This is a playlist by Sebastian Schmeideck. Don't know who it is. It's a nobody. Sebastian Schmeideck has 67 subscribers. No content on his channel. But look at his playlists. Baptism, baptism, German, videos, 91, but look at his Weiss Life channel that he made. This is a playlist made by a dude on YouTube who has 67 subscribers. Underwater gymnastics, back to school clothing haul, what's in my backpack, what's in my backpack, what I got for my 13th, turning into emojis, huge Black Friday, huge Disneyland, $20 Secret Santa, Secret Valentine, hula hoop challenge and tricks, huge family gold party, okay? The first image of the thing is underwater gymnastics, girls in their bathing suits. Rockasaurus Rex came up with another one. And let's open that one up here. Okay, so this guy, his name is Sean Daniels. Sorry, I'll put it here. This guy's name is Sean Daniels. Okay, let's take a look who Sean is. Sean has six subscribers, no videos, playlists, playlists, food recipes, USA, Piper and Sophie and friends. Like, this guy is a dude. We don't know who he is, and this is all conjecture. Could just be a teenage boy who likes family vloggers. Sure, could be. Could be a guy who likes family vloggers. No, sorry. Look at his Weiss family list. 31 videos, back to school clothing haul, underwater gymnastics. That underwater gymnastics challenge is on showing up on a lot of these guys' playlists. Social engineering to gain access to more personal information like credit card data um, and so on or photos relating to themselves or their parents or their family which those photos can be used to manipulate those children in many shape or form or their parents. Catfishing, spearfishing, we all know what catfishing is but spear fishing is, is like a normal fishing, but it is a targeted fishing attack. Like somebody wants to get money from you, um, but they have all this information and say, look, um, your mom's been in an accident. We need you to go and look for their bank da data and like send all of that to us and so on. Or your kid has been in an accident and we need you to like, pay all of these money and so on. And these type of things where they say your child, which is, this is their date of birth, this is their name, they go from the school, they say like, we picked them up from the school. So they tick a lot of boxes. And as a parent panicked to hear all of these things, you, you do tend to fall for it. Any type of targeted scams like spear phishing, kidnap, and I'm gonna, go into that a bit later with an actual example of somebody going through this. Being groomed by predators online because there's a lot of children that have unmonitored access um, on the internet through their phones. Um, so because of that, many predators can create a link through them, through social media, and a type of grooming can be start happening. And to finish with identity fraud. I don't really have to explain that because they have all the information needed regarding your identity. So fraud can happen. I would also like to include a clip from today's shows that highlight many more other dangers. And I also believe that these are not everything. I am pretty sure that we still haven't discovered everything that actually can happen with our children being online. I'm just going to show a clip. 
please go ahead and watch the whole segment because it's very informative and it's really good. I'm going to link the video down below, uh, but this is a clip from it. What's the danger here? For example, I know that one of her children broke his leg. How easy would it for me to be to come up to the kid and say, oh, you don't remember me, but I was the nurse when you came to the emergency room. How's your leg feeling? Come with me. Come with me. Children that have grown up either online or in the entertainment industry are starting to speak out about it and expose what they have been through as children and how their home life have been. A really good book is I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy that explains everything that she's been through in the industry and the actress Alison Stoner that has been very vocal about everything that the entertainment industry has put her through as a child actor. Uh, please do read their book slash watch their documentary. They're very informative about the ent entertainment industry and how even though they have protections as children, it's not, it's genuinely not enough. Regarding family vloggers, there are some children starting to speak out about it right now in a more anonymous ways, but this is one statement that somebody has given regarding kidnapping. Someone attempted to kidnap my sister and found it easy because they knew her full name, address, schools, and details about her. My detail, my sister didn't know he was a stranger because he knew so much about her. That is terrifying. How can we put our children online with so much information that somebody can genuinely convince someone that they have the children's best interest and the children are not necessarily have the capabilities. Some of them are like 13, 14 year old. They don't have the capabilities of taking care of themselves the way that they're supposed to. Hell, like we as adults can fall for these type of things. It's not hard to fall for these type of things, especially when they have so much information about us already. So when you're put in that situation, you're like, oh, they know so much, they must be trustworthy. They, they, they know so much about me. But that is very dangerous. Another must read that I found while researching regarding all these dangers um, comes from a Facebook page called Stay at Home Mom Life. And this is credited to um, the username Brad Lonnie. Lonnie? And it shows kind of the thinking behind what predators are thinking about it regarding um, how they reach children. And I would like to read it because it's a very, very important and scary passage. Single mothers with children at home, take it easy on posting your cubs so much. I just watched an interview with a child predator and these are the direct quotes. I don't follow teenage girls on social media. I look at their mother's page. And if I don't see a man in the house, that's why target. I get at the mother to get to the daughter spend some money because that's what a good man does. And he smiled, disgusting. And I'm in there. I use her selfishness and loneliness against her. With all this co-parenting, I'm having my way. I'm a wolf and there's no hunters around to protect the flock. I've been doing this a long time. I'm a master at it. Who's going to stop me? Every predator doesn't drive a white van. Some are handsome, charming, and drive a Benz. Fear these dudes out like life depends on it, because it actually does. That is terrifying. And they said blankly, they don't follow these girls. They find them, they find their mum, and that's how they get in. And I will not, I, I don't want to get into the sexual, the harassment that these children are being put into and the R word um, and so on that these children are being put through because their parents are not careful and are not vigilant with what they do online. On the bright side, some parents are starting to remove their children from YouTube or any social media 
or even starting to blur their kids' faces or put like cute emojis or I take photos from the children backside and so on. So I've been making YouTube videos for eight years now. Um, I started off doing pregnancy videos with my daughter and then we kind of transitioned to more daily vlogs. We did daily family vlogs for about three years or so and then we actually ended up quitting that which I'm sure we'll get into but I started I just completely changed my brand I took my kids out and then I started focusing more on myself and I started doing like plus size fashion and lifestyle and now that's solely what I do on my channel when did everything change for you the conversation that you've really been talking about on your channel started for us years ago and I don't even remember, I think it was Daddy of Five was the channel back then and they had posted something really inappropriate. I don't even remember what all the details were, but it started this conversation. That's when YouTube started disabling comments on all of these channels. And uh, for a lot of us, we were scared. At that point, I'd kind of already taken my kids off, but I know, you know, these family vlogging channels were like, oh my gosh, this is our income. What are we gonna do? And everyone started freaking out. But then we started looking into the analytics behind it and there's a creator here on YouTube her name is Elle and I think she was one of the first people to really talk about it and she was talking about you know playlists and just the analytics behind our channels and who's watching and that had never really occurred to me before because from my understanding it was moms and families watching my content and I thought those were the only people that could be watching I mean call my call me naive but I didn't really understand the ramifications of who could be watching. So I started doing some deep diving of my personal analytics, found my kids in some crazy playlists, found my daughter in a few playlists of like babies in diapers, because I used to film her in her diaper as a baby. Um, and it's just, I found the craziest, the craziest things. And Walk me, okay, I'm gonna pause you there. I gotta pause you there. Walk me through the moment you went down, I called them predator playlists. When you first opened that up, you typed in your family channel and went to the playlist. What was your, what happened? I think at first I was confused. Like, why would they want this? And then it kind of occurred to me, oh, okay. I didn't, I just, my mind never went there. It was, I was yep. disgusted. And then I ended up finding my kids and a lot of my pregnancy videos and things in message boards on different sites and I just felt extremely violated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And at one point, I mean, then obviously you, you actually made a choice that was probably going to affect your bottom line and, you know, a respect, which is why you're here right now, to be honest with you, like respect for the choice you made. But what choice was it that you ended up making after you finding those craziness? And by the way, all these family vloggers know what you're about to tell, what you're about to say here. They know, they've discovered, they know it. And yet they didn't make the same choice you made. Yeah, and I'm not sure if all of them know to the extent, but I posted a video on my channel about it and I did say that, you know, they have access to their analytics, obviously, but they look at their analytics all the time. So for me, I just knew right away it wasn't worth it. Um, there was some other stuff going on behind the scenes, like people found our address, they were sending my kids gifts. Um, I had people sending me hate letters and like this is not uncommon. I know so many creators who have had crazy scary things like pictures some people will print off family pictures of them and then they'll like scratch out their kids faces and send them pictures like that and this stuff was happening and nobody was really talking about it but it was enough to completely scare me and i was like mm -mm, i can't i i was paranoid all the time that something would happen to my kids and so i just decided to take them off i i it wasn't worth it to me how are legislators attacking all these issues as I said, child actors have a few protections put in place, like the Cougar Law or enactment of COPPA in the US and child, um, and child Employment Law and GDPR in the UK, as well as EU and Switzerland, which addresses privacy regulations that companies need to obey. And it does have consequences if companies don't obey them, which I'll get into it in a minute. But these protections kind of stop there and don't, they don't necessarily apply to the amount of data that these parents make public about their children online. 
and they definitely don't apply for the average child that is just a user of social media. There are institutions like Child Crime Prevention and Safety Center that provide an immense amount of information regarding everything related to child's well-being from physical to mental health. And many individuals online do try to advocate for these children and bring awareness to all these dangers, including mental health, their safety, their development throughout their childhood. And they try to put legislator to do something about it. These creators are like um, the Dad Challenge podcast, Mom Uncharted, and so on. In recent months, speaking of consequences, in recent months, there have been an improvement very likely improvement in legislation and it looks like people are starting hello no can you not drink my drink <laughs> and it looks like people are starting to pay attention to who is actually accessing all this data and the crucial need to implement the limitations Utah is the first US state that has implemented a limit on te teen social media access the legislation requires that platforms such as TikTok or Instagram or Facebook to get explicit parental consent for any children under the age of 18 and further verify that those users that are above 18 for that fact to be thoroughly verified. Soon you may not be able to lip sync or dance synchronized or compare your body negatively to heavily filtered influencers who do not eat food for a living or have access to adults who inappropriately slide into your DMs. At least without your parents knowing about it, all about it. Utah is now the first US state to require social media companies to get parental consent for children to use their apps or verify users are at least 18 years old. Governor Cox. I like to pause after that name, said he signed these two sweeping measures with the goal of protecting young people. This legislation will also give full parental control access to any post and private messages of the child's account. The parental control also comes with a curfew set by default on those devices in which children will not be allowed to use social media between 10.30 p.m. and 6.30 a.m. Under the legislation, social media companies will no longer be able to collect the child's data or be targeted for advertising. The two bills, which are also designed to make it easier to take legal action against social media companies, will take effect on March 1st, 2024. This is a big step in the right direction. The article goes on to talk about more of the risk um, that this type of legislation might put into place regarding children that live in dangerous situations or abusive household and how much more push there is in the US to ban the misuse of children's data. Another piece of news that we got in the past few weeks is the fact that TikTok was fined 12.7 million pounds, which is about $16 million, I think, for misuse of children data. According to BBC, TikTok was fined by the UK data watchdog for failing to protect the privacy of children. The site used data of children under the age of 18 without parental consent and may have used it to track and profile them and potentially present them with harmful or inappropriate content. It looks like authorities are pressuring TikTok to make more improvements regarding children's data safety. And to be honest, it's not the first time the UK data watchdog has given them a warning. And they know that authorities are aware of the fact that they misuse children data, specifically in the UK. TikTok's answer was the most bland answer ever. They said, our 40,000 strong safety team works around the clock to help keep the platform safe from, for our community. But what does that fully mean? You're definitely using 
misusing children's data and you're definitely using the data to target children. So what does that keep the platform safe mean? They believe that it's fine and all this fine is not necessarily justifiable for everything that they're doing. And of course, they're going to try to appeal it and reduce it and work with the UK legislators to reduce that fine. But all that being said, TikTok's parent company has reported a revenue at around $80 billion last year, which is about £64 billion. That is insane. £12.7 million is absolutely nothing when they do billions with a B of pounds in revenue every single year. But they're still going to try to fight it. Now, let's hope that TikTok actually gets fine and gets what they deserve and also changes the way that they use children's data within their platform. Because I really, I know that TikTok has opened up so much for a lot of people around the world. Um, the way that no other platform has been able to, um, and it's, it's a whole other universe, but there are companies like the UK government doesn't allow their um, employees to have TikTok on their phone. Um, the US government is the same. Um, even BBC has asked all their employees to remove TikTok from their um, BBC devices. So people are getting more and more restrictions regarding TikTok and we're not far along from pretty much TikTok being banned. It's been banned in many other countries. It could come in UK, US is working on it at the moment, um, as we all know, because it's been everywhere in the news. They're not really getting there because I think they're asking for way more than what the headlines are telling. Um, and the actual bill is way more detailed and it's asking for way more things. But I think TikTok should do something about it. There's many conspiracy theories about it, but I will not be getting into because this is just already off topic. Um, now, on top of all of that, this is, it's a bit of a, of a French tea, I'll say. From politico.com, I found an article re uh, saying that French legislators want people to step away from any Chinese or American social media apps. And because they think that there are a lot of privacy cons concerns and extraterritorial laws or lack thereof concerns. Compared to China, US has become a bit of a of uh, has become a bit defensive because they say that there are multiple privacy treaties uh, between France or um, the EU because France is in the EU, which they believe that American apps should not be put at the same level of any Chinese apps like TikTok. The French believe that there is a third way and um, French-owned apps are more fav favorable. From a French point of view, I get it. They got to protect themselves and they only believe in what they actually build. Um, this article is a bit biased regarding the French legislators, but it's a very interesting view in how other European countries kind of see all these social media apps and and the French have a very, very strong opinion regarding WhatsApp, Twitter, Facebook, and obviously. Great, you say you gave us all the bad news, nothing is being done about it, our kids are in danger, even if we post, I don't know, photos of us being on vacation that can be somehow manipulated into a worse way. What is the human condition is absolutely insane. I just... <sighs> anyway, and say, what can we actually do about it? Like we've seen all of the bad things. I've showed you all the bad things. What are the good things? What can we do about it? Us right now, because the legislations are not being put in place fast enough. And these dangers can be pretty much imminent. Now, some of the things that we can do to protect our children's privacy online is, are, are, get a password manager. 
and I do have multiple videos on my channel regarding passwords, password manager, password safety, and so on. So please go ahead, get a password manager and set very strong passwords. Carefully consider what you do online and when you post those things. So for example, you go on vacation, you have a great time, you come back and then you post those photos. Use as high privacy as highly privacy as you can on all these social media platforms. Facebook, regarding Facebook, put your uh, your profile to be on private, so only your friends. Um, as the Today Show, if you've watched it, um, <laughs> show says maybe do a clean out of your fr Facebook friends, maybe do a clean out of um, your Instagram followers, or you know see who you're, who's following you and kind of clean out the bad people, if you can find any. Now, use a VPN and any anti-tracking tools like uBlock Origin. Um, I'll put a link um, down below for it. Push for more legislations to be put in place uh, with your local council, with your local government. However, the law happens in your area don't allow your children on some of these apps if they're under the age of 13, 14, 15, sometimes 16. It depends how you want to educate your how you want to educate your children and 100% monitor them. And you ha like you have to be on it. Monitor what they see, what who they follow, what they search for what they do on their devices, uh, like phones, watches, computers, everything. Do you trust them, but just keep an eye out. Set complicated passwords, as I said about the password stuff, very important, set complicated passwords on their devices and avoid unwanted online purchases by educating. This is a very important thing, educate your children regarding spending money online, spending limits, maybe buying, uh, getting them prepaid cards for them to use in the beginning uh, before they get used to like having money and doing stuff on like their apps or games or whatever they want to play. Now, this is very important and this is taken from parents.com from a very, very smart privacy and advertising expert called Katie Goldstein. Don't let your kids outsmart you. Try to be like a step in front of them regarding uh, password security, parental controls. Um, include settings like don't allow them to change the time and date um, because that can, from a technology point of view, that can reset the parental control and they can have more access on their phones that they were supposed to be or something like that. As well as don't allow them to install new apps because they might want to be cheeky out there, install it, log in and then uninstall it and so on. Kids are very smart. Do not let them fool you. They're very smart. Now be aware of the fact that your kid might also have a, a fake Instagram or a Finsta or a fake account um, in, on any of the social media. So maybe have a conversation with them and not let them, I'm not gonna give you parental advice because I, I'm not in a position to do that, but try to be aware of that and um, Find ways to communicate that with your child regarding it if they have been given access to Instagram and so on. Regarding you, don't post photos of them, uh, of embar oh, embarrassing photos of them on social media unless they are fully aware of this fact and they're fully okay with it. I can even say that no children under the age of, again, 13, 14, 15, depends how you want to parent your children, they cannot give informed consent, so you have to give consent for them, which is a tricky subject to get into because every parent can parent their child however they want to. But maybe don't post embarrassing photos, maybe don't post their like accidents, 
their school, their school activities and so on, maybe every once in a while. And once they finish with, with that, I understand that every parent is very proud of the child, but you, you need to understand that maybe putting it out there online on social media, which by the way, is a very permanent platform. The internet is forever at this point, um, can be very dangerous for them. As I said, be aware of their privacy regarding your own content, as well as ask your friends and family to limit the amount of photos and facts and information that they put out there about them or tell them to block their faces regarding some photos and so on, or like, tag them in certain photos and so on. Another thing, and this is a lot of work on you <laughs> if you're a parent, um, monitor their digital fo footprint. Be aware of the fact that companies can own data about them, uh, like Meta, like TikTok, um, even places like, I don't know, they shop on ASOS, for example, that is an account, that is a place where they shop, that is part of their digital footprint. And this is very important and how they use their data and how they manipulate the data to convince your child to purchase something like something or ask you to purchase something for them. Another thing regarding holidays and so on, stop geotagging or sharing location on Instagram and TikTok and so on. Maybe wait until you get back home or until you get out of that location. So you're somewhere else before posting those pictures. And I know we like to post in real time and it's such an enjoyment for everyone, especially when somebody goes into vacation and they're like, Oh, we want to see pictures. We want to see all of this. That's great. But by you geotagging yourself, you can put your house that you left behind in danger with, if you have pets and you leave them there with your pets in danger, you can put yourself in danger as you are in vacation because you're telling hackers or predators that you are away from home and you are um, in a vulnerable situation in vacation where people are a bit more loose about their boundaries and you can be scammed in vacation. Many people are scammed in vacation. So maybe just wait until you get back home to post those photos. I know it's hard. I know it's hard and you want to like show everyone your beautiful tan and the beautiful views, but maybe just take the photo and enjoy them again. You have double enjoyment. You enjoy them again when you get back home and then you post them and then everybody's going to be like, Oh my God, it's so beautiful. There you go. <laughs> um, and as I said, Katie Goldstein also identifies regarding trying to prevent identity fraud. And this is a quote from that article. Thanks to a new feder federal law, you can freeze your child's credit files for free. This might only be applicable to uh, US, but I would say have a look into it. Maybe it is applicable somewhere else in the world. While it doesn't make theft impossible, it makes much more difficult to use your credit, to use your child's credit for nefarious purposes. Since most of us don't monitor our child's credit, it, this is a good idea. To freeze your child's credit, contact the three major credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, and request instructions. You'll then need to submit required documentation since the credit freeze cannot be set up online. So it is a bit of a, a bit of a work for it, but believe me, it is worth it. And now as a final thing, set a good example for your children, have conversations with them, educate them on privacy, educate them on password security, educate yourself as well as educate them with how they're supposed to act online and how, what to look out for. Maybe show them this video. It's not that scary. Um, maybe show them other creators videos that talk about these type of things and make them aware of the fact that the world can be a very dangerous place online as well. It's not how we grew up with the internet. It was a much safer place back then, but now it's not anymore and our children need to be aware of it. 
to close this all up, most of uh, this has shown what consequences 100% or fully um, online kind of represent. And the less we share about our kids online, the less data exists about them on the internet and it, the less data it is to be exploited, exploited out there. The less we let our kids use social media and restrict it until they reach a more appropriate age and understand the consequences of being online, the more we are able to keep them safe physically and on the online space. If we hold them back for a bit and explain them the dangers that we might encounter, as well as how to react in certain situations, we can equip our children with the right tools to fend for themselves and continue to do so for the rest of their online life. If they wanna drop out or not, that's their prerogative when they reach adulthood. This is not an easy task and it requires a lot of work, but it is very much worth it because as a parent, our number one priority is to keep our children safe. Nobody knows what the future holds, but we can make a difference in our children's life. Now, I would also like to highlight the point about children being in abusive households. And it's a very, this is a very sensitive topic. And I really hope that I am putting it in, in the right way. And um, the message that I want to put up is, is being taken the way I want it to be put up, not in a, in, not in a, in a bad way. But this is a massive topic and I think it should be explored more. As a society, as I said, we are responsible for our young children and our number one priority should be to keep them safe. I will not be sitting here and say that social media has only done bad things for us or our children. Many people around the world, including teens, have found communities online that understands and supports them in the way that they want to live their life. In an ideal world, we will not be talking about this. Unfortunately, with every system or legislation, there are be downsides and there will be consequences for even for the people that those systems and legislations are trying to protect. I do not have the right answer for this, nor do I want to say that these changes are the right thing to do and will not harm anyone that affects them. I would like to say that something has to be done about it. No one thing will solve all of our problems online and children physical and online safety has to be our number one priority. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Gotta get it right now. Yeah, push over the